This is the water cooled vertical hit and miss shipped from China. The box had a little bit of rough treatment. Look inside here. Packed very similar to the other hit and miss engine. Surrounded in foam, well packed. And it comes with a instruction sheet. This engine is being sold by banggood.com. Piece of fuel tubing, and this fuel tubing gets pushed onto the carburetor. We'll compare the new vertical hit and miss with the one I reviewed earlier this year. Centrifugal governor on both of them are the same, and all these pieces in here appear to be identical. The only difference here is this now has a plunger operated water pump and there's a cam behind this gear and when that comes up on compression that pushes in on that water pump at the same time. I stand the other engine on end very much the same size instead of having an open water jacket the water jackets now enclosed and the head on the vertical engine appears to be brass the disc on this one had the magnet in it that passes over the Hall Effect sensor. The same way with this disc, the only difference is that they've cut a groove into this to make it a pulley. So you can put a drive belt in there to power some attachment. The carburetor on both engines are identical. The exhaust manifold or deflector is the same on both. There's a vented cap on top of the fuel tank and the same cap is used on the top of the radiator. The same vented cap is used over here on the top of the crankcase. The center section of the flywheel has this copper colored anodizing. The water pump is this section right here. There is a roller bearing on the end of the plunger and it runs on a cam that's behind this gear. Now as this comes up on compression, and if you look right here to where the plunger is, as it comes up on compression, the cam behind this gear works that plunger. And then shortly thereafter, it opens the exhaust valve. Works the plunger, then opens the exhaust valve. So the cam is doing double duty on this engine. There's a pin right here. So I'm going to guess that there is some type of a check valve assembly in here or a ball to act as a check valve for this pump. I haven't filled this yet, but it looks like the plunger pump is taking suction off the bottom of the radiator, pushing water into the lower section of this water jacket until it comes out of the upper part of the water jacket that would push the air out of here and then it returns to the top of the radiator and this will vent and keep it from building up any pressure in the radiator from heat expansion. I use distilled water in these model engines and there is one cause for concern here if you live in a cold climate if this is going to be anywhere that would get below freezing the radiator would break and this water jacket would break. There's no provision for draining up the water jacket or the radiator without taking all these connections apart and you would have water trapped inside the pump as well. So that is something to consider. It would be a shame to have one of these freeze up and break. You cannot see inside this crankcase. So I'm assuming that they've made this engine the same as this. Everything that we can see the identical parts have been used. This has bearings on the crankshaft. It has a bearing down here on the lower end of the connecting rod. I can't really see what's up there in the piston. When I was running this I would drip some oil up here below the piston 
just to get some oil in there and I'd put oil on the upper end of this connecting rod. It's a little bit difficult to do it on this one. I'm going to turn this crankshaft until I see the lower end swing away and turn this upside down. I'm going to use a syringe with some oil in it and I'm going to drip some oil inside here so it goes up here where the piston is and hopefully some of it will drip on the upper end of that connecting rod. I'm going to use a little 3-in-1 oil on the gears, anything that moves, slides, or runs against each other. And up here in all the pivot points, contacts, and around these valves, we'll get a little bit of oil. And down here is identical to the other engine. You have a little battery pack for AA batteries and this is your ignition system for the spark plug. I asked Banggood to clarify their listing of these O-rings, make it a little less confusing. The correct O-ring is one of these. It's one millimeter diameter or cross section by 22 millimeter outside diameter. These are sold in a package of four and the correct listing for these will be in the description for this video. The machining on these engines is very nice. There's not a scratch or a ding or anything on any of them. They've been carefully assembled. The quality of the machining, the bead blasting, the anodizing just has a nice appearance to it. The quality of the brazing. These are very high quality model engines. I would not want to make either one of these for the price they're selling for. I'm still recovering from shoulder surgery. I don't have the strength back in my right arm. I'm not able to turn this smartly enough to get this thing to fire, especially when it's cold. So I've made a starter for this that goes in a cordless drill, very similar to what Myford Boy made. I made mine different. I'll have a separate video on how to make one of these. That starter does not scratch the flywheel. To get this down to where it's firing like a normal hit and miss, one way of accomplishing that is to lower the compression a little bit, and the other is to reduce the tension in the springs on this governor so the governor expands further and stays out longer. And these are not the original springs. These are about half the strength I don't like taking a spring off of one side. This is a symmetric mechanism. When you take a spring off of one side, these things are wanting to open kind of cockeyed. Given time, I think that would probably cause wear. These are much lighter weight springs, and it now runs pretty good. I haven't put water in this yet, and this is just running in short spurts, just barely warms up. Keep in mind that all the time that this is coasting, the exhaust valve is being held open, air is going in and out of the cylinder, and provides cooling. With the exhaust valve open, the intake valve cannot open, so there's no fuel going in. Now that it's running reliably, I'm going to put water in the radiator. When this is running, you can take this off once in a while and look in there and see if the water level has dropped. Use a syringe, put a few more drops in there. You can feel this and see if it's getting hot. And you feel down here on the radiator, see if it's warming up. If it is, then you know you're circulating water. If this has been running quite well and it decides to quit, it's probably a good time to check the batteries. It does seem to draw alkaline batteries down pretty well. You'll find putting a piece of tape across this hatch cover a big benefit. And the fuel in this tube, you don't want to see any bubbles in there. Get those bubbles out. And the easiest way to do that is to pinch this tube, pull it off, let a little fuel flush the line, push it back on. 
it seems to be very sensitive to having bubbles in that fuel tube. And I put two clamps on here to keep that thing from jumping up and down. It stays in place pretty well. Now, plus this is a little top heavy and I'm a little nervous about walking away from it when it's running. I'm burning Coleman Lantern fuel and I'm using a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil. About a half a percent. Just enough to give it a little color. That should be enough. This was quitting on me on occasion. I wasn't checking the spark plug wire. This is a very neat little push on connector here, but the, the high tension lead just pushes in here and there's a piece of bare wire that, that rests against the top of the spark plug. And that had vibrated back to about here and it was jumping about an eighth of an inch of spark. And every once in a while it didn't like that and it quit. One thing I would advise is do not grab hold of this and pull the wire out of here because if it does not find ground for the spark, it will shoot through this insulation that will zap you. This is also sensitive to the needle valve position. It's a little over an eighth of a turn further open than on the horizontal engine. And again, that could be a difference in the needle valve, difference in tank elevation. But this is open about three eighths of a turn. This has been running about a half an hour. The water jacket's warm, the head's hot. The radiator is definitely working.